French cars. I've got to admit, I've never really been a fan. But then again, I am wearing pink trainers, so who am I to judge? I'm a bit too young, so I missed out on the Saxo Pug 106 era, and apart from the odd hot hatch that Renault made, I've never really wanted to own one. But with my M140i up for sale, and the urge I have to get back into a front-wheel drive manual hatch, then I have to at least consider one of these little baguettes. Because you can pick up an absolute minter for about 10 grand. Yeah, they've got the flaws like any other car, but that's why I'm heading out in one today to see if they're any good. No mucking about. Let's get into it. <laughs> Right, so these Megans might not be everyone's cup of cognac, but they have a massive cult following. You can pick up an R26 for as little as three grand if you look about, but although the Mark 1 RSs are cheap and cheerful, they weren't a massive step up power-wise from a Clio. And with engine swaps being relatively easy to do, a lot of Clio owners decided to just take the engine out of the bigger car and throw it into their shell. Thus creating the Meglio, which is undoubtedly the coolest car mashup name I've ever heard of in my life. The Mark II RS is where Renault really took a step in the right direction, and although the Mark III RS has been out for the best part of five years now, it's the Mark II which I wanted to get behind the wheel of, because more often than not, they're the ones that you see blasting around at a track, usually on four wheels, but sometimes on the roof. Just before I continue, if you're not an expert on these things, because I'm definitely not one either, there are four generations of the Megane, but only three generations of the RS models, so when I say Mark II, I'm actually referring to the third generation Megane, but it just saves me saying Mark II RS every time. Usually though, you just call them a 250, 265 or 275, and I'll get onto why you do that in a second. For some daft reason, Renault made it harder for themselves by giving you about 35 different variants of the Mark II to choose from, and this is a breakdown I got from Glenn, who has that M2 comp I filmed a few weeks back, as well as a rare little croissant of his own in the garage, sort of explaining them all. The pre-facelift cars came as either a 250 or 265, which is basically just referring to the power output in horsepower. The facelift cars, the 265 or 275, have a slightly nicer front end in my opinion, but regardless of what power you go for, they made three distinct types across all the models. First off is the cup which comes with a real boggo interior, where Bluetooth was about the most ambitious thing that they decided to install. Manual climate control, no frills at all, I mean even AC was an option, but it did come with lower stiffer suspension, red Brembos and an LSD. Which is all you want really if you're going to be hammering it around a track. The full fat model came with all of the interior bells and whistles, leather Recaros, dual digital climate control, sat nav etc etc but it had a softer ride, silver Brembos and no LSD. So it was more of your everyday go into the shops kind of car. The full fat cup pack is basically a combination of all the good bits from the first two cars that I mentioned, including the nice interior, lower stiffer suspension, red Brembos and that all important LSD. But they did a few specials on top with some fancy extra bits. The Red Bull Racing Edition was basically a full fat cup pack with Red Bull stickers that only came in dark blue. Which is a bit weird to see now that both teams are in Formula 1, but back when it was released Renault were having a little bit of a break from the sport. The Cup S has a completely pov-spec interior, but came with Olin's coilovers and a Krapovic exhaust and Alcantara Recaros. The Trophy, which is the one that Glenn had, had every option ticked. Olin's coilovers and a Krapovic exhaust system, 19-inch Speedline Tarinis, which are an option as well, and an Alcantara and carbon interior, which sounds lovely jubbly. Last but not least was the Trophy R, a stripped-out hardcore version of the Trophy with no back seat, but all of the nice trick extras. Right, now all that's covered, what am I sat in today? Well, it's the very first one that I mentioned, a 2010 Megane 250 Cup. Admittedly, it's had a few tweaks here and there, but it's a well-used track slag that's only purpose in life is to turn laps as quick as it can. So there's no point going out and buying an absolutely immaculate full-fat cup when you're going to be stripping it down to the bare bones anyway. The modifications include a set of BC coilovers, Carbotech front pads, Ferrodo pads on the rear, Brembo discs and braided lines, a cooler work shifter, polybushed engine and gearbox mounts, OMP first star seats on pure track side mounts, an AirTech intercooler, a KTech intake, a DCAT downpipe, a mid box delete and an EFI parts remap which makes about 304 brake horsepower and 340 foot pounds of torque. The setup in this thing is stiff. Like, very stiff, and the roads that we went over to film on are bumpy, like, very bumpy. But when you're on a smooth stretch and you open it up, it pulls really well, and something I love about it which you don't get in the 140 is the sense of speed. It's more like a Jap car where you feel like you're going quicker than you actually are, probably because, like Jap cars, the interiors are shite. That's one thing the Germans will always have over everyone else, I guess. But I mean, this cup is well stripped out from the front seats back over, so maybe the extra rattles and exhaust noise had something to do with that as well. 
Strangely enough, after yearning for more power ever since I passed my test, I'm now in a car where I've got all the power I ever wanted, and I can't bloody use it the majority of the time. I've come to terms that less might be more, and I think the 300 brake horsepower mark with a good setup is the sweet spot. And it goes to show that with a few relatively cheap mods, you can even get the introductory Megane 250 Cup to that kind of performance with no problems. The stopping power, albeit with aftermarket pads, is really impressive. The standard pads are a bit shit by all accounts, and I've heard that from multiple people, so swapping them out for an alternative is highly recommended. But for the sake of a few hundred quid, it's well worth upgrading them. This really is the kind of car that I was after when the 140 goes, something you can bash off the limiter, feel really engaged in when you're behind the wheel, and still have a substantial presence on the road, which I think you lose if you drop down into something like a Clio. Other obvious choices instead of the Megane would be the Cooper 280, which is a little bit boring in my opinion, or the i30N, but they're more than double the price. Obviously, if you're opting to buy a 275 Trophy with next to no miles, then that might be a slightly harder decision to make. But if all you're wanting is a quick hatch with a diff, then you can go out and pick up a 250 Cup for under 5 grand, which is mental. There is a reason why the Nürburgring is littered with Megane RSs. You just can't get a better second-hand front-wheel drive hatch with the same factory spec for the price. Bad points? Well, apart from the Jap-like interior, the rear end does feel very light. Again, that might have something to do with the fact that the one that I was in was fully stripped out, but you just have to bear in mind that sometimes the back end wants to overtake the front if you dab the brakes midway through a corner. It is French, so the electrics have days where they want to work and other days where they just hold up a little white flag, and it's not a particularly cheap hot hatch to run either. The servicing intervals are way more demanding than my current car, the M140i, and the road tax is 100 quid more a year as well. But even after saying all of that, it's still a car I'm definitely going to consider going for. Yeah, 18 to 20 grand for a trophy might be a little bit on the steep side for a 7 year old Renault, but the spec of one of them things really appeals to a fool like me. I mean, I probably wouldn't mind a cup like this one to be fair, but if you can afford to splash out on a car with the extra bits, then why wouldn't you? Anyone who says they wouldn't want a Krapovich exhaust in Alcantara or Caros must be telling porkies. Anyway, that's enough from me now. Remember to leave a comment down below to enter the Doozy Car Care giveaway for completely free. If I pick your comment out, you'll win whichever two bottles of product you'd like for nothing, so you'd be daft not to. Like the video if you enjoyed it, thanks for listening to me because I'm full of coal. And if you want to stick around and join the club, make sure you click that big red subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!